On this special edition of the CB University podcast, we are joined in studio by Florida's Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Nikki Freed. Get the latest on the hemp industry in Florida, its explosive growth over the past year, her goals for the industry, and how Florida works with manufacturers to set industry standards nationwide. This is a special edition of the CBD University podcast, and it starts right now. I'm Joe Gaselli, host of the CBD University podcast. And if you are a returning listener, welcome back to our podcast. And if you are a new listener, we are glad you found us on your podcast platform of choice. A reminder, as always, that you could subscribe to our podcast wherever you get your podcasts and get notifications when new episodes are published each week and catch full video episodes of the CBD University podcast on the Global Widget YouTube channel and the YouTube channels of our brands, Hemp Bombs and Nature Script. And if you've been following along on our podcast, if you remember back on episode 44, and if I'm doing my math correct, that's about 23 episodes ago, we introduced you to the Director of Cannabis for the State of Florida, Holly Bell. And this episode, we are honored to have with us in studio the Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, Nikki Freed. Nikki, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, First of all, some background information for our listeners and viewers outside of the Florida area. What does the department oversee in the state? When were you elected commissioner? How long is the term? Yep, I was first elected in 2018 after two recounts. I was part of the Florida recount, a nightmare of 2018 with the governor and the U.S. Senate seat. I won by 6,753 votes over 8.2 million cast. Uh, so pretty pretty tight election. Uh, I am now the 12th Commissioner of Agriculture, the first female ever elected here in the state of Florida. And the, the position is so vast and varied. We've got 19 divisions uh, overseeing everything from obviously agriculture, which is our number two economic driver here in our state, uh, to all of our consumer services. That's our, our state fairs and fairgrounds and all of our school nutrition program across the state. So the school meal programs, our, feet, our food banks um, to conceal weapons, uh, which is a question that I probably get more than anything else is, can I have my medical marijuana card and my concealed weapons card? I tell everybody I've got both. Uh, so I so take it from there. <laughs> um, we oversee uh, everything from our Office of Energy. Uh, if you've been to a gas station in the last two years, you'll see my name on the gas station pumps. Uh, we have our weights and measures, so everything from the gas stations to uh, food stores. When you're when we're finally back to traveling, seeing our, our at the measures on the weights to, at the airports. Uh, so we have uh, such a vast array of things that we see. So basically, anything you have interaction with uh, every single day, we've had some kind of role in, in a regulatory oversight. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, Holly Bell joined us for a podcast previously, and you actually created that position after taking office. So why the expansion into cannabis? It was one of my platform issues. Uh, for those who didn't follow my campaign, I had three uh, messages, and it was three W's. Water, weapons, and weed. As we said, that I oversee um, our agriculture water also. Uh, weapons, that's concealed, and weed. Um, I first came from uh, the cannabis industry to begin with. I was a lobbyist for the industry for about uh, three plus years and was tired of uh, basically weed and, and marijuana being um, not advancing itself here in the state of Florida, that you know access to our patients for medical marijuana, and, and then also saw that across the entire country and wanted to make sure that we were moving the ball forward when it came to cannabis expansion and felt that cannabis uh, as the plant, not only on the medical side, but also on the hemp side, was going to be the future of the agriculture for the state of Florida and wanted to make sure that we had attention uh, given to that when I first took office. And so created this position of cannabis director for the state uh, to not only deal with some portions that we oversee in the marijuana world, which is the edibles and some fertilizers and pesticides, uh, but also uh, for creation of the hemp industry here in the state. And and so I found Holly and and opened up the applications and I can tell you that I received more applications for the cannabis director than any other position in my entire administration. We got applications from Canada from California, from Oregon, from Washington, from Israel. Everybody wanted to be cannabis uh, the director and uh, we found Holly and she has been just dynamic. And you talk about that hemp industry in Florida and Florida might be best known for fresh fruits and vegetables, but the hemp industry has seen some remarkable growth uh, since last spring when Florida's hemp program was uh, first approved, correct? That's correct. 
So we had uh, first my first legislative session as commissioner. Uh, we pushed a bipartisan bill to legalize the growing and manufacturing and production of hemp here in the state, uh, and also gave me authorization to regulate the CBD market. And so we were able to pass the legislation. We started working on rules almost immediately. Uh, and as of January 1 of 2020, we uh, everybody who has had some type of manufacturing and retail processing plants in the state had to be registered with us for CBD. And on April 27th, I tried on April 20th. I, tr I, was, I was seven days shy of getting my rules out on time, um, but I was able to put out our cultivation um, rules. And so now we've got almost a year under our belt of cultivation and about 30,000 acres that have been applied for and are growing here in the state. I have anticipation of this being a 20 to 30 billion dollar industry here from the state of Florida within the next five years and about a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand acres of grow and just for comparison uh, talking about our citrus industry as being the number one you know everybody knows about citrus yeah. on our license plates uh, citrus industry has right now a little under three hundred thousand acres so you can see where my dreams are for our state uh, that the hemp plant is going to be equivalent to our, our the amount of land uh, as our citrus industry and obviously for an industry that occupies that amount of land and, and a high amount of acreage, it means economic impact. And we talked about the you know, impact of the industry. But what about the job, creation and job growth? Oh, yeah, that is, that is part of it. And, and, and even more so now after this pandemic, where we know that so many people across our state has lost their jobs or have been uh, underemployed, not just unemployed. And so creating a, a new industry that is going to boom and bring jobs here to our state uh, we haven't had a new industry in our state in, in generations. And so knowing that I'm a small part of bringing um, hope to so many people in our state who want to be involved in this industry, already we have almost 10,000 jobs uh, that have come to the state because of the hemp legalization. And that's um, just going to continue to grow every single day um, that more manufacturing plants are opening, more, um, more hemp grows are, are growing, uh, processing plants, retail locations. And this is really going to be something that uh, it's going to be so great for our economy and for our people. And prior to the recording of our podcast, you had the opportunity to uh, take a tour of our main facility here in Tampa, Florida. Your thoughts on, on what you saw? Very impressive. Um, I've had the opportunity um, in the last five years to see everything from uh, THC grows and manufacturing um, out in the West Coast to the East Coast, everything here in the state of Florida, uh, you have a, a terrific, amazing operation here. Just the professionalism and, and the science that you all are doing, the precision of making sure that your products are safe for the consumers, that you're creating that training ground for uh, your employees, and really being a, a leader in this industry and showing everybody else how it needs to get done. You make my job a lot easier. <laughs> oh, glad to hear that. Thank you. Um, and what challenges does the industry face? I mean, obviously, you know, you're at the level where you're probably in touch with the FDA and, and, and federal agencies regarding CBD in a revolving door, it seems like, with news every day out of the industry. What challenges are there moving forward and what are we going to see maybe coming from D.C. in the next few months or maybe towards the next year? Yeah, there's a lot of issues from D.C. You know, a lot of it came from trying to explain the differences between hemp and, and marijuana. And that, that started when the Farm Bill passed in 2018, when we were able to start kind of opening that door. Um, so a lot of it's education. Uh, then we have been working really with the USDA since the Farm Bill passed uh, to make sure that their rules and regulations were not over-regulated. I'm somebody that, as even though I'm a regulator, I want the industry to succeed. And that means that we gotta do what's right, but not over-regulate to the point that companies can't grow and expand. Um, so really working with the USDA to make sure that they were doing right by, by our farmers and by the industry. But yeah, we've got a problem with the FDA right now. The FDA doesn't know how to regulate this. And so you've got a lot of companies who are trying to do good and try to do right um, and are in limbo because they don't know if the FDA is going to put out rules, what kind of parameters they're going to put into place, um, are they going to treat it as a nutraceutical, is it going to be treated as a food supplement, um, or are they going to stay out of it and just let kind of the USDA and the states regulate this. The other issues is exporting that we know that there's and something that I've been really pushing because I know that so many of our companies are excited about the opportunity to export their products both as the, the raw plant um, but also as finished products overseas. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately a lot of uh, countries overseas still see the hemp plant 
as a narcotic. Mm -hmm. And so Department of Commerce has had a real issue trying to figure out how to promote products that internationally could be considered a narcotic. Um, so we've been working with them and uh, think that the solution has been that the USDA is taking back ownership of, of the exporting of the product and is going to be using their marketing division to work with companies to start exporting and use this as an agricultural commodity. And we certainly hope we can keep in contact and have you back. I know your schedule's kind of tight today, but maybe if we do something even via Zoom for a future episode, love to know even, even more all about that. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to join us for this episode. Absolutely. And I do love that, that you are doing these episodes and, and you know, because a lot of it is education. It is really trying to educate the consumer to be looking for those QR codes, be looking for the labels, looking for uh, the Department of Agriculture's uh, license when you're going into buying products, uh, making sure that retailers understand that they have to comply and register with our department. Uh, so you all doing these podcasts and getting the word out to the community and making people aware these are safe products, uh, this is for your health and wellness, this isn't going to get you high, uh, this is going to just make you feel better. Well, thank you, uh, Nikki, for those words. We look forward to keeping in touch and having you back on our podcast. Nikki Freed, Florida's Commissioner of Agriculture and Consumer Services, my guest on this special edition of the CBD University podcast. And for more information on Florida's hemp program, uh, visit fdcas.gov, navigate to hemp and CBD in Florida. And stay on top of the latest industry news and trends by subscribing to the University podcast on your favorite podcast platform of choice, and you'll get notifications each week when new episodes are published. I'm Joe Agostinelli, the host of the CBD University podcast. Thanks for tuning in. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. CBD products are not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease or condition. Always consult your personal physician about CBD and using CBD products. CBD should never be used by anyone under the age of 18. This podcast is not intended to provide legal advice regarding the legal status of CBD and CBD products.